sponsored by Women Technology. Take advantage of our end of summer promotion, offering a $30 off bundle discount on the whole test takeout panel controls through September 2021. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the Mosquito Fighter Bomber Mark VI and we're looking at radio or radios for communication, transmission, receiving and direction finding navigation this is possibly going to be the best world war ii video you've ever seen i've really enjoyed this and you can see how good dcs can get as well so strap yourself in get a coffee we're going to go into a bit of nitty-gritty detail we've got in the role play me here i am in a mosquito sorry for my voice i've got a really bad cold and we are going to talk to sunaki kalki here tower if i can find it there it is on some various frequencies that we've got there then we're going to radio navigate to this guy here, an NDB, a non-directional radio beacon, which is transmitting a continuous signal, and we've got to find it via radio direction finding. This is something that was big during World War II. I think it was actually World War One as well, wasn't it, guys? But anyway, uh, then we're going to go and find a Sherman. This Sherman is in distress. He needs a mozzie to get there and strafe the forest or something. And he's going to be transmitting as well. Uh, you can see I've set him up here. He's transmitting a WAV file. If you want to know how to do this, I've done a full tutorial, by the way on frequency for megahertz amplitude modulation so the next thing to do is let's go and get all the frequencies and we'll put them in our kneeboard so the sherman is four megahertz the ndb is here and it is 525 kilohertz with a morse code identifier of delta alpha next let's look at the tower here it has four frequencies that's probably not realistic to have that in real life it's so that all the aircraft from 40s 30s all the way up to modern aircraft can talk to towers and dcs we'll try vhf 132 megahertz this is am and 4.3 megahertz we'll try with two different radios next is to look at our presets one of the radios can only do presets the other one can do presets and manual tuning click on our plane click presets the first radio is our tr transmit receive 1143 it has four different presetable channels in megahertz vhf am also as a base frequency we also have a transmitter t 1154 and we've got some different ranges the ranges are that well i call i like to call them bands different frequency bands if you want to know what the frequency bands are what you could actually do if you in cheeky way is just to put a big figure and a small figure and it will snap to the nearest high or low possible frequency i'm just going to change this radio here this is if you like the pilot radio the 1143 i'm going to change one of the presets to 132 in fact you can see i've already done it there like that that's the 132 of that tower there. The 1154, I'm not going to put any presets in. I could, I'm not, because I want to use this one for presets. And I'm going to use this one here for manual tuning, just to show that we can do manual tuning. Next, before we get in the cockpit, I need to show you a very important option, which is if I go to mission options there. In this video, easy communications will be turned off. If you've got easy communications turned on, which is, to be honest, what I do to make things easier in general playing, it means that you don't have to mess around with the radios, you don't have to turn the knobs. If you want it realistic, ensure that easy communication is turned off in the mission file, if you're editing, or your main options, if you're just playing someone else's mission. That's a very important thing. So, save, in we go. First, from the pilot seat, we're going to use the pilot's radio. It's essentially the same one as we've got for instance in the Mustang. We're not going to go over it fully because we've been over it many times now. I just want to very quickly show that you've, this is the 1143 by the way, that we've got uh, four presets as you saw earlier. Uh, we've got A, B, C, D. So first I want to show you that setting the wrong channel will not allow me to talk to the tower. It's just a way of proving that all this works in this model. To actually transmit, you're going to press COM push to talk. So let's press that. And you see at the top right, we can go ATC. I should say at this point, valid viewers, this is not an absolutely comprehensive full, full tutorial. This is just basic operation. Trust me, you wouldn't want a really comprehensive one. It would take hours. There's so much stuff to go over. I want to talk to Sanaki. I would like to request startup. Cool. This should not Radio work. One, one. Request startup. Lovely, you can see it doesn't work, right? Next, we're going to go to channel Bravo, which we set as 132. Uh, we're going to press the bind that we saw earlier. Ground uh, ATC. And you'll see that it does work. Call key. In field. One, one. Request startup. Ta-da! Right. All obvious, really easy to use. All stuff you've seen before in other planes. Great. Now it gets a little more complex. We're going to move over to the massive, super power, super long range 1154 transmitter and the 1155. 
five receiver. This is where things get super exciting if you're a nerd like me. So press two to get over to the second seat. You can do this in multiplayer, I've just figured out. Jump over to the second seat, I didn't realize that before. First, we need to get the top of this kind of headrest down, so we're gonna click on that button there. Zip, and now we get access to the 1154 and the 1155. Energize them, first of all. A little hard to see, but there are two switches down here. Switch one, switch two. Energized. Next is to set our head and neck up in a position where we can see these two beauties. So, so the first thing I want to do is to use this guy to transmit to the tower on a frequency of 4.3 megahertz and set this guy up to listen to the tower's response. The first thing I want to do is the 1154 right click to standby is warming up. Listen to that cool sound, right? Once you're happy it's warmed up, we're going to tune. Next, we need to look at the bands. The yellow, red, and blue are different frequency bands. By the way, these are the presets here that have come through from the measured editor, but obviously I didn't want to use presets because I consider it cheating. We want a band which encompasses 4.3 megahertz. Well, look at red. Red goes from three, four, and up somewhere around five. So obviously red is what we want. This band selector here needs to select to red. I've just been told from the stream that noise is the dynamotor. It supplies high voltage. Thank you, Auntie. So this one wants to go to red frequency. You can also see the frequencies written down there in small writing if you want to zoom in. Ping. Red band selected. Now we want to tune. So just simply click it and drag it or use your mouse scroll wheel. Uh, right. Okay, guys. So that is 4.3 as best as I can get it visually selected on the transmitter. We've also got CW, MCW and RT that we're not really going to go through today, but I want to receive and I want to transmit. So I'm going to go to RT, receive, transmit. This guy here is our kind of master mode slash aerial selector and it's going to stay on normal for the time being. Next, we're going to jump over to the 1155 receiver. First, we need to select a band. The bands are written there. Uh, I hope you can read that. We're going to go red band encompasses our 4.3 megahertz. Ping. Next, we're going to coarse tune the needle. So look red here. 4.3 is there. Let's do a coarse tune. Turn this. Coarse meaning the opposite to fine, obviously. If you start to think, wow, this modeling is amazing, then trust me, you haven't seen anything yet. Okay, that's roughly tuned it. For the mode we need at the moment, this mode on the left is fine. Next, we're going to turn the volume up because I do actually want to hear something at some point. So volume going up. I think we're close enough to 4.3 on the 1155 and 4.3 on the 1154 so that we can now talk to the tower. Wish me the absolute best when I try valid viewers. That there. Or I could go down here and ping, press it there. And of course, we've got our communication stuff up there. I'm going to go to abort takeoff. Watch this. Cookie in field. One, one. Abort takeoff. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Field. Yeah, we got it, boys. Uh, ignore the fact that was still on B. Trust me, that works because I used that push to talk for this radio. So now things get even more exciting. Next, what I want to do is tune in to the NDB, the 525 kilohertz, okay? This is why you need a second guy here. You can pilot and do this as well. Now, we don't need to transmit because we're only receiving at this point. It's passive. The NDB transmits, we listen. First, let's get the right band. We want 525 kilohertz, which is ba, 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 yellow, yellow band. Zap, zap. Okay, you can hear the fuzz. That is the means you're not tuned into a radio. It's like tuning an old radio in a car, right? So we're going to use our course and try and find a station at around 525. It will go quiet when you're in the station. You hear that? Now, I just haven't got enough resolution, so I'm moving to fine. Listen, and we've got the Morse code. You would then take that Morse code, jump into Google, other search engines are available, convert it to uh, ASCII, and make sure it reads Delta Alpha, uh, the same as the Morse code identifier. That means you're on the right station. It's very important to make sure you're on the right station. Next, we're going to turn this from just listening to it into a direction finding device. I am going to um, go left on here to direction finding ping ping the next thing we need to do is to balance um i can't explain why but maybe we'll come back to that in a bit but we're going to go to balance there and then we're going to look at our gauge here what's this gauge called dragon 
Directional finder indicator. Dragon would just happen to be part of our group and he just happens to be involved in making this module. So we're very lucky to have him at the moment. Uh, we're just going to first balance this here. So what I'm going to do is kind of move my head back here because I just, just the easiest way to show it. Because what I want to do, valued viewers, is to show you the indicator and these knobs up here. Like Dragon said, it's lucky because it's very well balanced because currently the needles cross over the center. But what if it wasn't balanced? Let me just say it wasn't balanced. There we go. Well, I want to balance it. Before we do anything, we need to balance it. So we're going to get the balance and we're going to adjust it until it's beautifully, we're looking at this guy here, by the way, so it's beautifully crossing over the middle. And it's very important to get it accurate. The more accurate you get it, the better the chance of finding the stricken tank or whatever. I'd say that's pretty well balanced, Dragon. Next, we're going to add some more amplitude and it's probably just a bit better if I show you what this does. It's stretching the needles up. That's going to give us, it's going to make it easier to read. And it's going to essentially make the readings more accurate as well. You can see it stretched them up like that. And I should say one thing. I didn't know all this stuff was modeled into DTS. So at some point we're going to go back into other warbirds and learn this stuff, which I can't wait for. I think it's going to be great. Uh, it's great about having a dev on. We can actually learn this stuff properly. Next, we're actually going to send the information from the radio receiver over to that meter there. And it's going to point to where we want to go. So visual, ping. That there, by the magic of physics and electronics and big brains, is now pointing towards the NDB, the 525. And all we've got to do is fly so that it kind of marries in the middle and then we're on the right heading. Cool, right? No, it gets even cooler. So I want to show you now, valid viewers, that we can home into the uh, Sherman, who's on uh, blah, 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 uh, 4 megahertz. So we're just going to go back to the beginning, essentially. going to turn this uh, off. Going to go back, back to signal finding. Uh, it's four megahertz, so let's try and find that, guys. So four megahertz is going to be on the red. Doing the same thing, trying to get the channel. Oh, missed it. Smooth jazz. He is putting out some smooth jazz, which is important. It's actually off uh, RC's Californian-based smooth jazz radio show. Uh, we thought we'd take a sample. How do you feel about that, RC? That's smooth. That's <laughs> <laughs> there it is, you see. You can take that as a quote. Volume up to maximum. And am I going to balance this again, uh, Dragon? No, the balance is uh, for the set as a whole. There's a two circuits left and right, basically, and they're not perfectly machined, so you need periodically balance them. So if you're done it for, for this plane, it's, it's okay. For so are you saying in that case, are you saying the imbalance is, is internal, it's from our set rather than the signal? Yes, the balance is you're balancing two left and right circuits, which are, yeah. How interesting. Basically, they are not electro, not a solid state of them, just yeah. not perfect. Very good. So I'm not going to balance it. What I am going to do is go to visual, ping, ping, ping. And you can see, give it a second, it's now pointing towards the, the tank and we can, go and we can go and find the tank. But there's some even more cool stuff. What about if we wanted to know a direct heading to that tank, right? And bear in mind, this will all be done in the air in real life. You can imagine how difficult this stuff is. We want to find a direct heading. Well, we can get our antenna loop at the top to tell us that. So I need to first reset my face back here somewhere. Now, there are essentially two ways of doing this, uh, visually or uh, audibly. I'd like to do audibly first. Um, so why don't we change to audio mode instead of visual? We're using audio mode to fine-tune this uh, What's this aerial called? Loop antenna. Right now. I've got left and right isolators here So listen what happens when I press left and hold Nothing now listen to right. I can hear the sound that's telling us turn the aerial right to find the source So let's do it let's unlock Turn it right which I always get confused is right in aspect Everything in this loop antenna is based on the aspect or of the aircraft, so just bear that in mind. So right, it's going to be that way. Right, uh, uh, whoops. Just do it in, uh, you know, I don't know, 15 degree steps. Left, empty right, is there. Nope, want to keep going. Want to keep going until it disappears on left and right. About 25. Left, empty. Right is still there. Nope, not happy yet. 30, I don't know how, maybe 40 should we try? Left. Right, still there. I can hear the bit. I can hear the snare drum. Uh, let's try fifty. Left, right, silent. We have now tuned point to where the radio source is. Now all you got to do is a tiny bit of maths. 
you need to take our heading, where the aircraft's pointing, which you're going to do from your directional gyro, from your magnetic compass, you know, whatever. I'm just going to cheat down on the bottom bar. I can tell you my aircraft is heading down here, 275. What's 275 plus 50 degrees right? It is... Uh, Three to five degrees, either true or magnetic. I can't work that out at that point, but either of them. Well, why don't we go and see how accurate that was? The actual tank, true heading, is 330. We were five degrees out. And what would you say is the average error in this method of doing things, Dragon? Well, if you're doing it audibly, I think uh, plus minus five degrees is just about perfect. Roger. Now, remember, the closer we get to him, the smaller that five degrees in real terms means. If you're 100 miles away, that's a big error. If you're two miles away, it's only a few feet. There's just one more thing I want to show. And again, we're really just scratching the surface here. I want to show the visual method of doing this. So let's scramble this. Scrambled. We could also do this visually. This is a little bit difficult. I'm going to left click on here so I can move it forwards and backwards. Now look at the visual gauge. And I'm going to keep moving left and right. You would also probably switch the sensitivity to high to just pinpoint it. Roger. We'll do that in a second. I'm just struggling to get this in. That's just near enough for friends. There. I've done it visually. And let's see. 50! Look at that. And uh, you said high sensitivity. So high sensitivity. How does that help Dragon? Deflects the needles more with each uh, degree of uh, misalignment. So if you want to know where you're exactly on the point right. that makes sense right okay so i'm going to quickly take off valid viewers fly to the source and let's see how well we do right i just need to lock this back in position oh, i'm going to turn the sensitivity down oh that's much better let's see if we remember how to fly this thing with our smooth rc jazz show available to anyone in the californian area local time 2 a.m to 5 a.m. and then he starts work with me at 5. He's a busy man and then do you want to tell everyone where you've been because everyone on the internet has been asking where you've been Narcy. Uh, I've been fighting fires. I've been fighting fires there you go. So you can now sit and watch me balance the needles. You can see I'm looking down there obviously on the on the meter. <laughs> After this you watch it not work. There would be some shouting at Dragon I'm not gonna lie. Now, if you want to know range, Valley Viewers, I can't tell you that. I don't know the range, but you know when you're over the target because the needles will spin around all of a sudden. And along the way, the guy would be fine-tuning and doing stuff like that, the uh, the navigator radio operator. One thing they stated even in the menu is periodically check if you're flying towards or from the station. So just take a left-right turn and see where you are deflecting. If you're turning yeah. left and uh, it shows that you're turning left from the Roger. station, then that they're probably flying towards it. So he's starting to bend off to the left now violently. And I'm going to guess it's over there. You can see it's bent over to the left and it's going to drag me around. I would, you know, follow it and it would drag me around. And I think that might actually be him there. Uh, there he is. So in terms of accuracy, it got me there in less than a mile within visual range. And obviously, if you had a guy fine tuning it and stuff, you could make it better than that. So that is, like I said, kind of scratching the surface of the 1143. Of obviously, obviously, there's more functionality there. The 1155 and the 1154, there's a lot more functionality there. We haven't even looked at using the different aerials and stuff like that. All these amp gauges is all modeled but that's an hour plus video the interesting thing we've learned as well is a lot of this is actually modeled in other warbirds that we didn't well i just didn't think it worked it's just, it's not in the manual i've read through all the manuals so I, I look forward to also looking at some of the stuff in the other warbirds it's not to this scale this is the best one so far but um i think it's really interesting any final thoughts from dragon before we sign off i'm looking forward to doing the other warbirds because I'd like you to cover all the aspects of navigation that we have. Sounds good. Hope you enjoyed that. Go and do some radio navigating, and I'll see you later.